Okay, let's set this up. I remember about 10 years ago, I had so much back pain. I couldn't even walk, get up from a chair, get out of a car without excruciating pain. And I felt very good and young. I was just so surprised. I'm like, why? is this happening and so over the course of those 10 years i've learned a lot from my journey of recovery and over the last 10 years of teaching yoga and practicing structural integration i think there's a few things i want to talk about and share with you today so here are my 10 tips in an attempt to fix back pain We'll first look into some general tips and principles and then go into some specific exercises I suggest you do to help you get out of the situation. And maybe you are not even in a situation that you have back pain at the moment, then that's fantastic. Appreciate the fact that you're healthy, you're able to move without pain and know that a lot of people are in pain. I saw some crazy statistics of the majority of Americans having back pain in the future and there's many different reasons for it and I hope I can touch on some of those here in the video. Now the first tip that I have for you is to take ownership over your situation. Stop complaining about it. You're already in a situation right now. Now you need to look into what to do and what changes you need to make in order to get out of it and hopefully not have it come back. Most of the time, it's not that there's one accident, like a car accident, and now you have back pain. Obviously, it's most likely from this event and you will heal from it. You need to do the right recovery and rest and then hopefully get back on track very quickly and then live pain-free moving forward. But for a lot of people, all of a sudden the pain is there and they don't really know why. And that was also the situation with me. I was in jiu-jitsu training, I was very active, lifting weights and everything. All of a sudden one wrong move in jiu-jitsu and I had back pain for a very long time, very bad. Went to the doctor and he said, just stop exercising. And this is probably the worst advice uh, you could give anyone. Like movement is such a good medicine, vitamin movement on a daily basis is extremely crucial. So very poor advice and I hope I can give a little bit better advice or suggestions in this video. So take ownership and you're already here interested in this topic. Maybe it's not directly for you, but you know someone that might benefit from it, then please share it with them. Sometimes a lot of the healing journey is to look into all the different options. And maybe you try so many things, but you keep looking and nothing has really worked so far really well. And you keep researching, you keep looking into it. And maybe there's this one thing and it works really well for you and your body responds amazingly to it. And it takes you out of this misery and helps you move forward with more resilience and vitality. So I believe a big part of this healing journey and figuring ourselves out is trying different things and then continue with and stick to what works for your body. With that being said, this is all very general advice. These are tips I would suggest to someone online, but it's not individual advice for your specific body, for your specific structure, your history, your injuries, all of these things. That's not possible to do here in a video like this. And even if you try to leave some comments asking about your specific situation, I would love to help, but just reading the text, I can't really help you with your specific situation. I'll try to give some more general tips that you can try. But if you need individual suggestions for your unique body, for that you need to go to a certified structural integration therapist or to a personal trainer. I have some information in the description below. You can check it out and find the practitioner near you. If you would like to book a session with me for structural integration, which also expands into movement and all kinds of other areas, I offer them usually in Las Vegas, where I currently live, or somewhere else in the world, whenever you're watching this video. More on that in the description below. You will hear me say a lot in the description below, but at this point, one reminder to check the description. There's going to be lots of information for you. There is also a video on this channel that has a long list of tips to fix your back pain. We call it the ultimate guide to fixing back pain. Go check that out. That has some valuable information in there. And I'm not repeating or rewording those things that are in there. This video is very different and it's seen as a nice complement. So both videos together are very powerful. The body is an entity of relation. It's always one body and all the areas relate to another. One change in one area affects a very distant area. 
the force is transmitted always through the whole body so having any kind of changes along that path of force transmission will affect the whole body the body starts to compensate it always tries to make things work it also always tries to heal itself and be most efficient in what it's doing so it adapts to your specific input this is why it's important to evaluate how you have been treating your body for the past decade if you are for example sitting at a desk job for eight hours a day plus two hours commute in the car again sitting and you then go to martial arts training at night after sitting for 10 hours probably not a good idea and there needs to be some changes to whatever extent maybe switch between sitting kneeling and standing at your desk if you have the option park further away so you can walk a little bit more go on longer walks to use the restroom at your office just go to another floor and walk the stairs there's many different little things you can do that add up over the whole day and make a big difference essentially what you want to focus on is a good alignment and balance of the rib cage over the pelvis thoracic diaphragm the actual diaphragm the dome of the diaphragm over the pelvic diaphragm so these two diaphragms aligned over another enable you to take deep breaths in all directions you can easily try this out by just sitting as you are or standing if you want to and tilt your pelvis forward and bring your rib cage tilt your rib cage back and then take a deep breath you feel most of the breath going in the front but really not much in the back or the sides now if you go to the opposite and you tilt your pelvis back and you tilt your rib cage forward and then you take a deep breath you feel more going into the back and a bit more into the sides. So these are kind of the two extremes. So you want to then find a positioning that feels natural in the middle where they are nicely stacked. And then you can take a deep breath and it's actually expanding 360 out to the sides and also upwards. And this is not something that you want to always think about and then focus on consciously. Otherwise you add one pattern of an existing pattern and you might make things worse hence you want to seek a structural integration practitioner that addresses the root cause so you can rest effortlessly into this aligned space where the breath can fully expand and nourish your whole body the body is literally meant to walk and we are meant to walk i'm meant to walk you're meant to walk and most of us don't walk enough depending where you live this might look different in my experience, people in living in Europe or in South America, where the cities, even big cities are more built to walk. They walk a lot more, obviously. And then in other places like the US, where everything is very far spread out in most places, there's generally more driving involved and more sitting and less walking. So you need to, of course, make this work for where you are in your environment. But it's, I think, safe to say that walking more is a good idea. Walking and deep breaths really provide this nice input into the body to expand and lengthen in all directions. With each deep breath, you literally bring the ribs up and out and that creates more space between the vertebrae, really nourishing them. So deep breaths is a nice remedy and nourishment for the spine, especially the, the lumbar and the, the lower back where most people have some problems. And the walking provides some nice input into the pelvis, into the sacrum, SI joint, which of course also affects the spine. Most wa walk with just the legs, but the walking is actually a full body motion and it's more of a rotational movement than just walking forward and back. So in order to walk, it's more of a loading and recoiling as you walk with your arms, you rotate through the spine and it's this loading and recoiling full body walking that makes it so helpful and nourishing so not just walking but also learning to walk properly which i would say 90 percent of people are not doing just like how 90 percent of people are not breathing properly so hopefully this is all some good input and sparks your interest to look more into all these topics this is exactly what i'm offering here on the channel and on the platform and what my wife and I made our life mission to help people with. Your shoes have a great impact on your whole body. This makes a lot of sense if you look at the anatomy trains and the connections in the body through 
The anatomy trains myofascial meridians, for example, superficial front line, superficial back line. The superficial back line goes from the bottom of the feet all the way up the back side of your legs, up the lower back, up the back, the neck, all the way towards the eyebrows. So it's no surprise that there's a connection from the feet to the head and that some people maybe have headaches and migraines because they're wearing the wrong shoes. It's good to provide different inputs through shoes to the feet. There's a big trend on barefoot shoes and being barefoot is the best and wearing barefoot shoes is great. But if you're only walking with bare feet or barefoot shoes on flat artificial cement, it's also not good. But if that's where you live, and that's all you have, then that's what you need to do. But then not only with barefoot shoes, but switching the shoes to something where you still have space for the toes. So shoes are still wide, but the sole is maybe a little bit thicker so that it's not so aggressive for the feet, for the body walking on flat cement. I usually suggest to avoid flip-flops, at least for a long period of walking and have something where the foot and the shoe are really connected and moving all together. So that includes something around the back of the foot over the heel. So flip-flops are not really great for that. So just keep in mind that always the same shoes on always the same surface probably create some problems. A daily holistic movement practice is really the best you can do for your body. I understand that not everyone wants to start a daily yoga practice, but I have a beginner program which is suitable for really anyone and it's also perfect to add to any kind of training you're already doing. It will actually in fact make you better in your training and your skills that you're working towards. A lot of the training that we do is very specific. It's very specific input to the body and the body responds with uh, specific changes that might lead to imbalances and problems and maybe catch your attention in forms of pain. Adding something into your daily or weekly schedule that is holistic, that allows you to move the whole body in all directions with deep breaths and mindfulness and awareness will help you a lot, especially in the long term and make whatever you're doing more sustainable. There is a 30 day beginner program I have available for you for free. Check it out. All the information is again below in the description. You know where to find it all. Split squats is a nice exercise I recommend. You can do this really anywhere. I suggest to do it first with no weights, just your own body weight and work on clean form and clean execution before you even think about adding more weights. And it's not so much about just doing the split squats and bringing the front leg forward, allowing the heel to lift up, but then also staying in your maximum or deepest position in the split squats that really provides a nice lengthening of the psoas, which is part of the deep front line, including iliacus. And the role is of the psoas to support the spine from the front. And so having this extra support is really great. A lot of people maybe have too short of a psoas from all the sitting. And so lengthening that is usually what people need more than strengthening it. Most, for most people, it's position short instead of position too long. But of course, it all exists. But I'm just speaking generally for most people. This would be a nice exercise, a nice stretch to do on a regular basis. Downward facing dog is a great position to lengthen the entire superficial back line. But then while you are in a downward facing dog, play around with posterior and anterior pelvic tilts. So you just tilt your pelvis forward as you are on a downward facing dog. See how that feels, breathe into it, stay there for a little bit and then posterior tilt or tuck the tailbone. See how that changes the whole relationship in your body and the sensation and the feeling. Take a few breaths there and then repeat. You can also do just quickly forward and then back. So it's more like a fluid movement and play around with it. See what feels good for your body and of course stay out of pain. If there's any strong painful sensation, again, I recommend seeing a structural integrator that can really look at your body and all the relationships of all the different areas to another and give you more individual advice. Personally, after every jiu-jitsu training, I use my belt for my own stretching routine that I've been doing for like five years. And this was a video I filmed a long time ago. 
you know now where you can find it. And I still do this routine after every single training. It's great to lengthen the superficial backline, including the hamstrings and also touching into all the areas around the pelvis, especially piriformis and the lower back. 90-90 is a great position to be in. Personally, I prefer it over pigeon pose. I think for most people, it's just too dangerous of a position to be in, especially yoga practitioners, especially online here. So 90-90 is usually the position I prefer with any kind of hip focus, external or internal rotation. For that, you bring the front leg into 90 degrees and then the back leg into 90 degrees as well. If 90 degrees is too much, then just bend the knees a little bit more so you are at an angle less than 90 degrees and then perform all the exercises there. One of them is to just lean forward over your front leg and then you can just stay there over the, the thigh and the knee or move with the upper body towards the foot and then back towards the knee and play around there. Hold wherever you feel like it's needed and it feels productive and good. Take some deep breaths there and relax. Another way to work on more resilience there is to do active stretching. So you're coming into a lengthened position as I just explained, but then you take away slowly the support from your hand. So you don't have all the weight in your hands just holding you there, but you maybe come onto your fingertips and be lighter on the fingertips. Maybe even lift the hands up off the floor and then hold it there. So you're in a lengthened position, but then you're contracting. The, the tissues and of course there you can also perform repetitions with the hands on the ground which is called piriformis push-ups or the hands off or behind the head and then just go forward and down and then back up there's many different versions and i'm just showing you of a few of them here because we're sitting so much and we don't really take deep breaths into the lower back the QL for most people, the quadratus lumborum, tends to be on the position short side of the spectrum. So taking deep breaths into the lower back and out into the sides is helpful. But a specific exercise I like to do and recommend is coming into a seated straddle forward fold or a version of Janushri Shasana and then reaching side bending to one side. You don't have to touch the foot or anything. Just side bending and leaning and reaching and taking deep breaths into the side that you're opening so if you're leaning and reaching to the right breathing into your left and the other side vice versa is very helpful to lengthen those tissues take it easy take it slow and if there's any strong discomfort of course back off and seek professional advice but some discomfort is of course necessary especially if you are already having pain then moving into these areas might be a little bit intense but usually on your road to recovery this is part of it and you don't really want to push it too much but some discomfort especially if in a, if you are in a acute situation is necessary and helpful but again seek professional advice in person if you have any specific needs or questions <laughs> Cat cow is a wonderful movement to work with the pelvis and also with the spine, but it's a really nice movement to isolate and segment each area or different parts, but also to move the whole spine, including the pelvis. Super nice movement to do every single day. About 10 rounds of cat cow works already wonders. And if it's not part of your routine already, I highly recommend adding it in. These are all fairly simple tips but i hope they make you curious to look more into them i know how it is to be in a situation where you have so much back pain you can't walk or move or even function and all you want is to just be pain free and not be in excruciating pain when you're rolling around in bed at night so that also affects your sleep negatively and you can quickly get it down into the spiral of depression and feeling so bad in your body so i hope that this provides a little bit of help and hope and light at the end of your journey that there's many people like me and thousands hundreds of thousands of other people that have been there before and it requires your work and your effort and you need to make it a priority and you need to make time for it but it is possible the body is meant to heal i hope that these tips provide some good guidance maybe a good starting point and i hope you are very soon in a good situation where you feel good pain-free you can move and live fully 
with lots of resilience, vitality, strength, and calm. All the best to you. See you very soon. Peace.